Okay, welcome back. In this video, we will continue our video series on pharmacology, and we will discuss chapter number 13, gynecologic and obstetric drugs. Uh, learning objectives for this chapter, describe the difference between monophasic, biphasic, triphasic, and four-phasic oral contraceptive drugs, describe the therapeutic effect of ovulation-stimulating drugs used to treat infertility, describe the types of drugs that are and are not prescribed to pregnant women, describe the therapeutic effects of drugs used during labor and delivery and in the postpartum period. Describe what drugs are used to treat endometriosis, dysmenorrhea, and abnormal menstruation. Describe the various types of drugs used to treat vaginal infections and sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, discuss the types of drugs used to treat menopause and the risk involved with taking hormone replacement therapy drugs. When given the name of a well-known OBGYN generic drug, identify the trade name. When given the generic and trade names of an OBGYN drug, Identify what drug category it belongs to and what disease it's used to treat. When given an OBGYN drug category, identify several generic and trade name drugs in that category. And lastly, when given an ending common to several generic drugs, identify the related drug category. All right, first, we'll start uh, this chapter with drugs that are used to prevent pregnancy. Now, pregnancy occurs at the moment that an ovum is fertilized by a spermatozoan. Now, there are several different drugs that are used uh, to prevent pregnancy. Some act because they change the hormonal environment of the female re reproductive tract so that a mature ovum is not produced or not released by the ovary. They can also act by killing the spermatozoa, or they can also act by uh, keeping a fertilized ovum from implanting within the endometrium. All right, the first kind of drug we'll talk about are oral contraceptives or birth control pills. Now, these exert a hormo hormonal influence uh, to prevent pregnancy. And these are 99% effective if taken as directed. And these act because they change the hormonal environment of the female reproductive tract. And these are divided into one of three groups, monophasic, biphasic, and triphasic. Now, birth control pills like this, they contain a combination of hormone drug categories, including uh, progestins and estrogen. And the doses can either be fixed or they can be varied. Now we'll talk a little bit more uh, in depth. And normally, the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland secretes FSH, follicle-stimulating hormone which will stimulate a follicle within the ovary to develop a mature ovum. FSH also causes the follicle to secrete estradiol, which is the primary female hormone. Estradiol is what causes the endometrium to proliferate and thicken. Now later, the anterior pituitary gland will secrete LH, luteinizing hormone, which will cause the follicle to rupture and then release the mature ovum. And that process is ovulation. If the ovum is not fertilized, the remains of the follicle, called the corpus luteum, will disintegrate and progesterone production will stop. Now when this happens, the uterine lining will lose its source of oxygen and the tissue will die and then the tissue will slough off in that process of menstruation. Now, LH also causes the corpus luteum to secrete estradiol and progesterone. So if the ovum is fertilized, the corpus luteum will continue to secrete progesterone to prepare the endometrium to accept the fertilized ovum. Now oral contraceptive drugs supply hormones from the progestin and estrogen categories to suppress the release of FSH and LH from the anterior pituitary gland. So a mature ovum is never developed or never released. So without an ovum, the spermatozoa from the male will have nothing to fertilize and a pregnancy is prevented. Oral contraceptives can also cause changes in the cervical mucosa and also in the endometrium that inhibit spermatozoa or keep a fertilized ovum from implanting within the endometrium. So all these actions work together to prevent conception and therefore prevent pregnancy. Oral contraceptive drugs can also have serious adverse effects, such as blood clots, stroke, and heart attacks, all because of their estrogen content. And because of these risks, most physicians choose to prescribe an oral contraceptive drug that contains 35 micrograms of estrogen or less in each tablet. The risk of these adverse effects increases significantly for patients who are older than 35 years of age and also those who smoke. And all oral uh, contraceptive drugs uh, must carry the warning that they do not protect against sexually transmitted diseases such as HIV. All right, now we'll talk a little bit more about the different categories of these birth control pills. And the first one is monophasic oral contraceptive drugs. Of course, the prefix mono means one, so this is one phase of treatment. And each hormone tablet of the pill pack will have a fixed dose of progestin and estrogen. Uh, some examples of uh, drugs that would fall in the progestin category would include the ones listed here, levonorgestrel, norethindrone, norgestrel, and norgestimate. And some examples of, of drugs that would fall in the estrogen category would be ethanol, estradiol, 
and mestranol. So each pill will have a fixed dose of one member of each of these categories. Now in a 21 day pill pack, there are 21 hormone tablets. In a 28 day pill pack, there are only 21 hormone tablets and seven inert uh, sugar tablets that will complete a 28 day menstrual cycle. Now some examples of monophasic oral contraceptive drugs would include Elise, Brevicon, Demilin, Desigen, Loestrin, and Low Overall. Some other examples of uh, monophasic uh, contraceptive drugs, Libral, Modicon, Noronil, Orthocept, Orthocycline, and Orthronovum, Ofcon, Ovral, Seasonal, Yasmin, and Yaz. There are many different trade names uh, for oral contraceptive drugs. And some of these, but not all, include numbers after the trade name. And it's important to understand what those numbers actually mean. A monophasic contraceptive drug has one phase of treatment with fixed amounts of hormones. For some monophasic oral contraceptive drugs, the doses of progestin and estrogen are designated by two numbers that follow the trade name of the drug. For example, uh, the trade name drugs Noronil 1 plus 35 and Orthonovum 1 slash 35 contain 1 milligram of a progestin drug and 35 micrograms of an estrogen drug in each tablet. The trade name Ofcon 35 indicates only the amount of the estrogen drug in each tablet, which would be 35 micrograms. A biphasic oral contraceptive drug has two phases with a changing dose of a progesterone but a fixed dose of an estrogen. Now, For some biphasic contraceptive drugs, this is reflected in the trade name of the drug. Uh, for example, Orthonovum 10 11 provides 35 micrograms of an estrogen for all 21 days, but the dose of a progestin will change from 0.5 milligrams for the first 10 days, followed by 1 milligram for the last 11 days. A triphasic oral contraceptive drug has three phases of varying doses of hormones. Uh, for example, the trade name drug Orthonovum 777 shows that there are three phases of differing hormone doses and that each phase lasts for seven days. And other triphasic uh, contraceptive drugs, orthotricycline, triphasal, have the prefix tri in the trade name to indicate the three phases. As one of the other categories of contraceptive drug, uh, biphasic drugs, these contain two phases of hormone tablets in each pill pack. Uh, phase one will provide a fixed dose of a progestin and a fixed dose of estrogen. And some examples of the progestin could include desogestrel, norethindrone, or levonorgestrel. An example of estrogen would, would include ethanol estradiol. So that's phase one, where the doses are fixed. For phase number two, the estrogen doses stay the same, but there's an increased dose in progestins. And some examples of a biphasic uh, contraceptive drug would include losizanique, Merset, orthonovum 1011, and seasonique. Now these two oral uh, contraceptive drugs sound very much alike. Seasonal and seasonique, but they are very different. Seasonal is a monophasic contraceptive, and seasonique is a biphasic contraceptive drug. And these drugs are made by the same manufacturer, and they are unique in that their hormone tablets are taken continuously for three 28-day cycles, which would be 84 tablets, and then followed by seven inert tablets. So this means that the patient has a menstrual period only four times a year, as opposed to each month when taking other contraceptive drugs. And these kinds of drugs are known as extended regimen oral contraceptive drugs. And the trade names make a reference to the four seasons of the year, seasonal, seasonique, with menstruation only occurring once per season. Another category of uh, contraceptive drugs are the triphasic drugs. There are three phases of hormone tablets in each pill pack. Now, phase one will have a fixed dose of both the progestins and the estrogen. Phase two Either one or perhaps both of the hormone doses will increase in each, in each tablet. Phase three, either one or both of the hormone doses increases or decreases in each hormone tablet in the pill pack. Uh, some examples of a triphasic uh, contraceptive, Cycleza, Ethrostep, Orthronovum 777, Orthotricycline, Trinoranil, and Triphasal. Another category of contraceptive drugs are the uh, four-phasic drugs. And these have four phases of hormone tablets. And the phases will last for different lengths of time and provide different hormone drugs in, in different doses. Some examples of a four-phasic drug would include Natasia, 
which is a combination of dianagest and estradiol valerate. Also, quartet, which is a combination of levonorgestrel, ethanol estradiol. These are some other examples of hormone contraceptives, and these would act by providing a fixed dose of a progestin and an estrogen. An example of this would be the Nuva ring, and this is in the form of a ring that is inserted in the vagina. Orthoevra, this is a transdermal patch that is applied to the skin. Okay, and some hormone uh, contraceptive drugs only contain one hormone. The ones we've talked about so far were a combination of a progestin and an estrogen. But the next kind we'll talk about are progestin-only contraceptive drugs. So these will only contain progestins such as norethadrone or norgestrel. And these are slightly less effective than a combination uh, contraceptive drugs. And this is even more pronounced if a patient forgets to take a daily tablet. And because these drugs contain no estrogen, the risk of blood clots is avoided, along with other adverse effects of estrogen. It's also useful for mothers who had just given birth and who want to breastfeed the baby because the drug does not interfere with the milk production. Some examples of a progestin-only uh, contraceptive drug, Camilla, Aaron, Heather, Jolivet, and Orthomicronor. Some other examples of a progestin-only uh, contraceptive drug are implants. Now, some could be inserted underneath the skin. Uh, some could be inserted into the uterus in a device that has a, a T-shape to it. And the contraceptive effects of these drugs can last from one to five years, depending on the amount of the drug within the device. And some examples of, of an implant like this would be etonogestrel, known by the trade names uh, Implanon and Nexplanon, and Levonogestrel, also known by its trade name Marina. All right, in this image, we have an example of what the Marina device would look like. And again, it only contains uh, progestins as a contraceptive, and this would be implanted within the uterus. So this is an IUD, an intrauterine device. Now, some uh, progestin-only contraceptive drugs uh, can be taken orally, but only after unprotected intercourse uh, to prevent pregnancy. So these are the uh, morning-after pills. And some examples of this would include levonorgestrel, sold under the trade names Plan B or Plan B One Step, and also the drug Ulipristal, which is sold under the trade name of Ella. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat infertility. And in general, the way that these kinds of drugs will work they will stimulate the ovaries to produce ova. They will prepare the endometrium to receive a fertilized ovum. And they will correct any hormonal imbalances. These are often used as a part of a program of ART, Assisted Reproductive Technology. All right, first kind of drugs we'll talk about are the ovulation stimulating drugs. These will stimulate a non-ovulating ovary to develop multiple follicles and then release mature eggs. Now this is appropriate for patients with an ovulation, which is a failure to ovulate. Now, this is not appropriate for patients with infertility due to a blocked fallopian tube or problems that require a surgical intervention. Now, some of these drugs will act by stimulating the hypothalamus and the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. This will cause a release of FSH, follicle-stimulating hormone. And other drugs act in the same manner as FSH or luteinizing hormone. Some examples of these kinds of drugs would include Cetral Relics, which is sold under the trade name of Cetratide, Choreogonadotropin alpha, which is sold as a trade name Ovadrel, Clomiphene, known by its trade name Clomid, Digarelix, also known by its trade name uh, Firmagon, and Philotropin alpha, known by its trade name Gonal F. Some other examples of this kind Philotropin beta, known by its trade name Philostom AQ, Ganarelix, Human Chorionic Gonadotropin, also known by its trade name Pregnil and Prophesi, Lutropin alpha, known by its trade name uh, Luveris, Menotropins, known by its trade name Repranex, and Eurofolotropin, known by its trade name Brevel. All right, now we'll talk about progesterone drugs that are used to treat infertility. And these act because they help prepare the endometrium to receive a fertilized ova. These are used in conjunction with other drugs for infertility in women. And progesterone is sold under the trade names of Crinone and Procheve. See, there are other drugs that are used to treat infertility. Now, some drugs will act by decreasing excessive amounts of gonadotropin-releasing hormone that may be secreted by the hypothalamus in patients who are, who are already on ovulation-stimulating drugs. And two examples of this kind of drug would be Cetrorelix, also known by the name Cetratide, Generelix. Other drugs that are used are actually used to treat type 2 diabetes mellitus. 
These are also used to stimulate ovulation in women with polycystic ovaries. Some examples of this kind of drug would be metformin, also known as the trade name glucophage, and also the drug rosiglitazone, also known by its trade name Vandia. Okay, now we'll move on to drugs that are used during pregnancy. And very few drugs are prescribed during pregnancy. In particular, they're in the first trimester because of the increased risk of birth defects in the developing fetus. Now, drugs for chronic diseases are given to protect the health of both the mother and the fetus. So, chronic conditions such as hypothyroidism, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, and antibiotics for acute infections. And also, pregnant women are prescribed prenatal vitamins, iron, and folic acid. All right, now I'll talk about drugs that are used to treat nausea and vomiting during pregnancy. Now, most women will dread the morning sickness that often accompanies early pregnancy and wish there was a drug to relieve this excessive nausea and vomiting that's caused by the changing hormone levels. In the late 1950s, the drug thalidomide was developed in West Germany and was used extensively to treat morning sickness. But the FDA refused to approve its use in the United States without further studies. Before these additional studies could be completed, evidence against the safety of the drug began to accumulate, and over 8,000 babies were born in Europe with deformed extremities because they resembled seal limbs. So not until 2013 was another drug approved by the FDA, and that drug is Daclagis, and it's a combination of doxylamine and, and pyridoxine. And this drug contains both an antihistamine and vitamin B6. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat premature labor. Now, premature or preterm labor and delivery greatly increase disease and death rates in newborns. Now, premature labor contractions can be inhibited by using uterine relaxing drugs. And these work because they act on the beta-2 receptors in the smooth muscles of the uterus to decrease both the frequency and the strength of the contractions. And these drugs are also known as tocolytic drugs. In the past, the drug Ritadrine, also known by the trade name Utapar, was widely used to treat preterm labor. However, it was taken off the market in the year 2000 due to safety reasons. Other drugs that inhibit contractions of the uterus have been used and are still being used to treat preterm labor. And these are prescribed at the physician's discretion, and this is also known as unlabeled use, as it is unofficial, but it is still legal. Now, some of these drugs can include terbutaline, which is an FDA-approved bronchodilator drug used to treat asthma. Magnesium sulfate is a drug that's approved to treat seizures as caused by toxemia during pregnancy. Isoxaprine, which is a vasodilator drug. Endomethacin, which is a NSAID, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to induce labor. Now, a woman in labor may be given a uterine stimulant if the uterine contractions are too weak and they can't produce delivery. And this absence of effective uterine contractions is known as uterine inertia. Now, these stimulants may also be given if there are complications that necessitate induction of the labor for the safety of the mother, such as in uh, preeclampsia. The hormone that is naturally produced and released by the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland is oxytocin. It's also known by its trade name, Pitocin, and this will act by stimulating the uterus by binding to special receptors on the smooth muscle cells of the uterus. So this is the, a synthetic version of the naturally occurring hormone oxytocin. Now the drug works the same way as the naturally occurring hormone would. It increases both the frequency of the contractions and also the strength of the contractions. Now this drug is not used when prolonged labor is because of cephalopelvic disproportion, where the baby's head or body is too large uh, to fit through the pelvis. Okay, and when it comes to labor, labor consists of uterine contractions, uterine dilation, or the widening, and effacement, which is the thinning of the cervix. You will have uh, prostaglandins that are secreted by the placenta. These are to help widen and to thin the cervix as labor begins. And it also causes uh, the smooth muscle fibers in the cervix to dilate and collagen fibers to break down. And this before the process of labor begins, you have what's called cervical ripening occur. This is where the cervix starts starts to soften, so it is able to dilate and also is able to become thinner. When the cervix does not dilate and is not thin during labor, these drugs may be given. And those drugs include dinoprostone, also known by the trade names Cervidil and Prepidil, Laminaria, and also the drug Misoprostol, also known by the trade name Cytotec. And this is a drug that is taken orally. Okay, now we'll get into drugs that are used to treat the pain of labor and delivery. Now these will be analgesic drugs, including uh, narcotic drugs. And these can be given either subcutaneously or intravenously. And these routes are preferable because uh, the pain of labor and delivery 
can cause a woman to vomit, so an oral route of administration is really ineffective. And also drugs that are used to treat the pain for labor and delivery can be anesthetic drugs that are given via an epidural route. Right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat postpartum bleeding. After the delivery of the baby and the placenta, the uterine muscles contract strongly, and so it can close blood vessels from the site of the placental separation. So this can lead to postpartum bleeding. So postpartum bleeding can be due to the uterine relaxation or the uterine atony, which is the lack of tone of the muscle. So this will result in increased bleeding at the site of the placental separation. Now drugs that are given to treat postpartum bleeding stimulate the uterine muscles to contract. Some examples of these kinds of drugs would include carboprost, which is also known by the trade name hemabate, oxytocin, also known by the trade name uh, pitocin, ergonovine, also known by the trade name ergotrate, and methyl ergonovine, known by its trade name methergine. Right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat postpartum depression. The hormonal changes of pregnancy and delivery can cause depression in some women, and drugs that are used to treat uh, this condition will be discussed in a future video on chapter number 16. Now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat endometriosis. Now, the endometrial tissue travels from the uterus and then uh, through the fallopian tubes. It will also implant on the outer surfaces of the ovaries, uh, some abdominal organs, and on the walls of the pelvic cavity. Now this is the tissue that will uh, slough off and die during menstruation. And this tissue is actually forced upward through the fallopian tubes by uterine contractions due to the uh, retroflex position of the uterus instead of going down through the cervix. Now this tissue will remain alive and sensitive to hormonal changes. Now during each menstrual cycle, the tissue will thicken just in case the woman does get pregnant so the uterus is ready to receive a fertilized ovum. Then if there is no fertilized ovum that gets implanted, it will slough off as the tissue starts to die. And this tissue will form more implants in the abdominal cavity along with old blood and tissue debris. And it's going to form adhesions between ad abdominal organs. So endometriosis can cause uh, pelvic pain and inflammation, cyst formation on the ovaries, and blockage of the fallopian tubes. And drugs that are used to treat endometriosis include hormone drugs. And these are used to suppress the menstrual cycle for several months, during which time the endometrial implants will shrink and then fade. Here's some examples of drugs that fall in this category. Danazol, Goserelin, also known by the trade name Zolidex, Luprolide, also known by the trade name Lupron Depot, and Nefarilin, also known by the trade name Cinerel, and Norethindrone, also known by the trade name Agistin. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat uh, dysmenorrhea. Uh, dysmenorrhea is having painful menstrual cramps. And this is caused by an increase in prostaglandins. And this can cause the uterus to contract very painfully. And this condition is treated with either over-the-counter or prescription analgesic drugs, such as NSAIDs, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. This can also be treated with COX-2 inhibitor drugs, and they work because they inhibit the action of the prostaglandins. Some examples of drugs that are used to treat dysmenorrhea, Celecoxib, also known by the trade name Celebrex, Diclofenac, also known by its trade names Cataflam, Flector, and Voltaren, Ibuprofen, more commonly known as Advil and Motrin, Ketoprofen, Meclofenamate, Mephenamic Acid, also known by the trade name Ponstol, and Naproxen, also known by the trade names Aleve, or Midol Extended Relief, or Naproxen. Now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat PMS, premenstrual syndrome. Now this condition is characterized by uh, dysmenorrhea, breast tenderness, uh, fluid retention or edema or bloating, and mild mood changes. This condition is treated with combination drugs, and these combination drugs will contain analgesics for the dysmenorrhea, uh, diuretics to treat the fluid retention, and will also include an antihistamine with a weak diuretic effect and a sedative effect. And a very good example of drug that will be taken to treat this condition is Midol, which is an over-the-counter drug. Now, Midol is a very well-known over-the-counter drug that's used to treat dysmenorrhea. However, it is important to note that different trade names of Midol actually contain different generic drugs. For example, Midol Maximum Strength Cramp Formula contains the analgesic drug ibuprofen. Midol Extended Relief contains the analgesic drug naproxen. Midol Maximum Strength Menstrual, Midol Maximum Strength PMS, and Midol Teen Maximum Strength are combination drugs that contain the analgesic drug acetaminophen and a diuretic drug to decrease the edema or the swelling. Right, now we'll talk about uh, drugs that are used to treat abnormal menstruation. And when I say abnormal, uh, some examples of that could mean amenorrhea, which is the absence of menstruation, menorrhagia, which is an abnormally heavy menstruation, 
and progesterone drugs act directly on the tissues of the endometrium to restore a normal menstrual cycle. Uh, some examples of this kind of drug would include medroxyprogesterone, also known by the trade name Provera, norethindrone, known by the trade name Agestin, and progesterone, known by the trade name Crinone. Drugs are used to treat vaginal infections. Of course, these drugs will be applied vaginally, and these can be manufactured in various forms. It could be a cream or an ointment, it could be a suppository, or it could be vaginal tablets. A common vaginal infection is a yeast infection. And this is caused by the uh, Candida albicans. And this infection is also known as candidiasis. And a common symptom of this infection will be a, a white discharge from the vagina along with uh, itching. Now, yeast infections can be treated uh, with over-the-counter drugs, including butoconazole, known by the trade names Gonazole 1 and Mycelex 3, Clotrimazole, known by the trade names uh, Mycelex, Gynlotrim, and Myconazole, known by the trade names Monostat 3, Monostat 7, and Fagistat 3. Uh, some other examples of over-the-counter drugs used to treat infections, Nystatin, Sulfanilamide, known by its trade name AVC, Terconazole, known by the trade name Terazole, and Teoconazole, known by the trade names Monostat 1 and Vagistat 1. Many drugs that are used to treat candidiasis end with the suffix azole. And many antifungal drugs also end with this suffix, because yeast and fungi are so closely related. And drugs that are effective against one are often effective against the other. Okay, now we'll mention a, a drug alert when it comes to these uh, trade names. Did you notice that in the trade name drugs, Monostat 3 and Monostat 7 are listed with the generic drug myconazole, but the trade name drug Monostat 1 is listed with the generic drug teoconazole. The generic drug teoconazole is a much stronger antifungal drug than myconazole, and only one day of treatment is needed as compared to three or seven days of treatment that's needed with myconazole. The drug company that manufactures Monostat chose to keep the same trade name on all the products, even though the generic drugs are different. And the same is true for the drug company that makes Vagistat. So that's what those numbers after the trade name drugs are referenced to. The Monostat 1 or 3 or 7, for example. Monostat 1 is only a one-day treatment. Monostat 3 is a three-day treatment. Monostat 7 is a seven-day treatment. And the same would be true for Vagistat. When it comes to bacterial vaginal infections, also known as bacterial vaginosis, these can be caused by several different types of bacteria, including Haemophilus, Gardnerella, and, and Carinae bacterium. Now, bacterial vaginal infections are treated with topical anti-infective drugs. And some examples of this kind of drug would include uh, clindamycin, known by the trade name cleosin, metronidazole, known by the trade name metrogel vaginal, and tenidazole, known by the trade name Tindamax. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat uh, STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. And we'll start off with uh, gonorrhea. Now, gonorrhea is caused by the gram-negative uh, coccus bacteria, Neisseria gonorrhea. This can cause uh, painful urination and also produce a thick yellow discharge from the vagina. Now, oral antibiotic drugs from several different categories are effective in treating gonorrhea. Another STD uh, is syphilis. This is caused by the gram-negative uh, spirochete treponema pallidum. This can cause uh, fever, a rash with uh, various lesions in the genital areas, and these lesions can ulcerate and form a crust. And these lesions are also known as uh, shankers. And oral antibiotic drugs uh, from several different categories are effective in treating syphilis. All right, another type of STD is chlamydia. Now, chlamydial infections are caused by a gram-negative uh, caucus bacteria named chlamydia trachomatis. And symptoms here would be a painful urination and having a thin discharge. And oral antibiotics from several different categories are effective in treating chlamydia. Another example of an STD that we'll talk about is AIDS, Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. This is caused by the HIV immunodeficiency virus, which is a retrovirus. And this virus will invade CD4 lymphocytes in the blood in order to reproduce themselves. So when this happens, large numbers of CD4 lymphocytes are destroyed. So this will upset the balance between CD4s and CD8 lymphocytes. CD8 lymphocytes will then suppress the immune system, which will leave the patient basically defenseless against infections and, and cancers. Uh, symptoms of AIDS... Fever, night sweats, weight loss, enlarged lymph nodes, and diarrhea. See another example of an STD we'll talk about, genital herpes. Now there are two different uh, viruses, if herpes simplex 1 and herpes simplex 2. Herpes simplex number 2 
causes infection in the genital area. And herpes simplex 1 will cause infections in other parts of the body, in particular the mouth. And these infections are known as cold sores. And genital herpes, these lesions are treated both topically and with an oral drug. Another example of a sexually transmitted disease is uh, genital warts. This is caused by HPV, human papillomavirus. And this is the same virus that will cause uh, common warts and also uh, genital and venereal warts. And the topical drugs that are used to treat uh, genital warts will be discussed in more detail in a future video with chapter number 17. Another example of an STD that we'll go over are drugs that treat trichomoniasis. And this is caused by a protozoan named Trichomonas vaginalis. And this causes a, a very foul smelling uh, greenish yellow uh, discharge from the vagina. And the drug that would be used to treat this would be tenidazole, also known by its brand name Tendamax. And this is an oral antiprotozoal drug. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat menopause. Now with menopause, the ovaries will secrete a decreasing amount of estrogen and progesterone. And some common symptoms of menopause are vaginal dryness, hot flashes, and fatigue. And one method of treatment for menopause is using HRT, hormone replacement therapy. You can have estrogen hormone replacement therapy to correct the deficiency in the levels of estrogen, or you can have a combination therapy that includes progestin and estrogen replacements. Now, most doctors recommend hormone replacement drugs for a short-term treatment in younger women who are experiencing uh, severe menopausal symptoms. Now, the long-term use of hormone replacement therapy is both good and bad. It may reduce the risk of osteoporosis, but any woman who's on HRTs for a longer period of time must be sure to keep their cholesterol levels low. And long-term use is also associated with a higher risk of breast and endometrial cancers, blood clots, strokes, heart attacks, and dementia. We'll now talk a little more in detail about estrogen hormone replacement therapy. Now these drugs will replace the decreased levels of uh, the hormone estradiol. These could include conjugated estrogens, like Primarin. It could be an esterified estrogen, like Menest. Estradiol, known by the trade names Clomera, Estroderm, Evamist, and Vivel. And Estropipate, known by its trade names Ogen and Orthoest. There are also combination drugs that are used to treat menopause. And these drugs will combine a type of progestin and a type of estrogen. Some examples of a progestin that could be included in the combination drug would, would be Drospironon, Levonorgestrel, Medroxyprogesterone, Methyl Testosterone, Norethindrone, and Norgestimate. Some examples of an estrogen that would be included in the combination would be conjugated estrogens, esterified estrogens, ethanol estradiol, and estradiol. Now, some combination drugs are also indicated for the prevention of osteoporosis in postmenopausal women. Now, some examples of combination drugs that are used to treat menopause would include Activila, which is a combination of estradiol and norethindrone, Angelique, a combination of estradiol and drosperinone, Clomera Pro, a combination of estradiol and levonorgestrel, Combipatch, which is a combination of estradiol and norethindrone, Duavi, which is a combination of conjugated estrogens, basidoxaphene, Estratest, a combination of esterified estrogens, methyl testosterone, Femert, which is a combination of ethanol estradiol and norethindrone, Premphase, a combination of conjugated estrogens and medroxyprogesterone, and Pempro, which is also a combination of conjugated estrogens and medroxyprogesterone. And some other drugs that are used to treat menopause include antidepressants. These are usually used to treat uh, depression, but can also be used to treat the hot flashes that are associated with menopause. An example of this kind of drug would be paroxetine, known by its trade name Brisdil. Another drug that can be used to treat menopause, remifemin, which contains the herb black cohosh that has been used for years to treat the symptoms of menopause. And this is, can be effective in some women. Now this does not contain estrogen. This is available without a prescription. It's an over-the-counter herbal treatment. And it does not have the risk of blood clots and stroke and heart attack because it does not contain any estrogen. Another drug that can be used to treat menopause is ospemaphine, known by its trade name Osphena. Now this drug is used to treat moderate to severe dyspareunia, which is a painful sexual intercourse due to the uh, tissue atrophy and the dryness in menopausal women. Now this drug is an estrogen agonist antagonist drug. The drug binds to some estrogen receptors and will stimulate them, and then the drug binds to other estrogen receptors and then blocks them. 
And this drug is also labeled as a non-estrogen slash non-hormonal treatment. All right, that brings us to the end of this chapter. We will continue our video series on pharmacology with our next video on chapter number 14, Endocrine Drugs.